Hey guys, it's Fog. Welcome to Fog's Rides. Today we're going to do something just a little bit different. Today I have an unboxing video for you. So let's open it up and take a look at what we got inside. So here we have a bunch of stickers from Revzilla. We'll toss those aside. We don't need those. And here we have what I was looking for. Uh, this is a Kyoko throttle lock. So we're going to open up the package, take a look at what comes inside. We have a little end weight. We have a little Allen wrench and we have a little washer that goes inside the end cap. We get a bunch of instructions. So this thing is relatively easy to install. All you have to do is remove the weight at the end of your handlebars. Uh, to do that, we use a, an Allen wrench. We're going to go ahead and replace that with the throttle lock. First, we slip on this plastic washer, and that acts as kind of a spacer to uh, press up against the side of the throttle. And then we just use the same screw that was holding on the old weight to install the new weight. And it's really just that simple. Use a little bit of uh, thread lock to make sure that the screw can't come apart. And that's really all there is to it. When you go and apply the throttle, you also use your hand to turn that nut towards you. That presses the washer up against the throttle grip. And the friction between the washer and the throttle grip holds the throttle in whatever position that you leave it. Now it doesn't keep the throttle from moving, so you can still override the position by just twisting the throttle very gently. And uh, it's very easy to do. So, and in fact, because all this is is a throttle lock, it's not a true cruise control. It won't, you can't set your bike to a specific speed and have it automatically maintain that speed. All it's really doing is keeping the throttle from returning back to normal. So you can take your hand off the throttle, give your hand a rest for a while, but if you come to a hill or something, you may need to adjust the throttle to either throttle, open the throttle a little more or close the throttle a little more to compensate for the speed. Which, in my opinion, is actually a pretty good thing because it keeps you actively engaged in maintaining the speed. But on a long ride, it's very nice because it means you don't have to actually grip the throttle constantly to maintain its position. You only need to grip the throttle when you want to change its position. And that can be really, really nice on a long ride. And as you can see here, it lets me take my hand completely off the bars, rest my hand for a while. Most of the time I'll use it, I'll keep my hand rested on the throttle. I just won't be gripping the throttle. And it makes things much, much more comfortable for a long ride. So anyway, the Kyoko throttle lock. There's a bunch of other throttle locks that work in a similar way. Uh, the Throttle Meister is the one that most people are aware of. They're, that's also a very nice product. In my opinion, the advantage the Kyoko throttle lock has over the Throttle Meister is, first of all, this nice, this nice uh, throttle ring is it's a nut with with some nice ridges and crenellations that are very easy to grip so it's 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 very easy to twist it with your with your hand and also it's much easier to install because it doesn't require that you actually remove the threads from inside the throttle bar uh, the the throttle meister actually requ requires that you remove the threads inside the throttle because it's the entire end weight that turns as opposed to just a little nut. So anyway, the Kyoko throttle lock. I really like it. I've had it for a few weeks now and found it really, really easy to use. Highly recommended. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully this was something that interests you. If it does, leave a like, subscribe, stick around. We do these from time to time. And thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you all again later. Bye bye guys.